<laughs> it's it's good and i think it works and i think especially in this episode like we get um we see how important the side quests are one for all the character growth like we mm-hmm. get so much character growth for all of them here um Sokka of course and his sexism and like learning better we get the Katara and Aang like their relationship growing naturally out of that conflict but then also we get another example like we got this even in the premiere and the fact that like Aang wanted to take the side quest to the Fire Nation ship Mm -hmm. like that had bad consequences and like here he sees again that like him wanting to just do a fun little side quest to run like ride the elephant mm-hmm. koi had very very real consequences for and like all of yeah these ignoring people. his avatar responsibilities will only like, make things worse yeah like and he sees that and you can see it in him that he really starts to feel that like when he's i mean that's why he dives back into the water and uses the anagi mm-hmm. to save the day is because he's like well i have to try to do something because mm-hmm. like it's also really like heartbreaking whenever katara is like the best thing for us to do is leave. Like the yeah. best thing we can do is get out of here. Like, and he's like, but these people, I need to help. And so it's yeah. good that he's like learning from that. Um, and like, it just makes for those side quests. They're not just random side quests. They're very integral to the They're growth. important. They're not filler and episodes. Some people would call that a filler episode. It's which, so not. Again, the it's door. so not. Leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. I also, I, <laughs> I love in this episode how, it's one of the first, ex- it's like the first example, except for the Southern Water Tribe, but it's really the first rest of the world example of seeing how yes. the world has been affected by the war. Because like at first, the reason they're tied up at first is because they're like, we don't accept visitors here because there's a war going on that we've tried our best to stay out of. Stay out like, of. We do not get involved in this. Go away. <laughs> like, yeah. they don't want anything to do with it. And that's, you can totally understand how that would happen like Mm -hmm. where they're like well we just have to look after ourselves and our own and we can't really worry about anything else because we don't want to get invaded by the fire nation like Mm -hmm. we'd rather just deal with our little island and like stay here and that's really like it's a really important thing to show in the world and it helps expand the world and make it feel more real and like gives all these characters like you can then imagine how their normal day-to-day life is and especially like how their lives have been leading up to this and like Mm -hmm what they've gone to do like for that um and then the other big thing that i of course want to talk about is the whole fact that this is kiyoshi island like yes oh, we so get great. a hint into this so early. Yeah. yeah which is amazing like one they have her design down because obviously all of the kiyoshi warriors are taking from Modeled her design her, yeah. which is a fantastic design it's so good <laughs> it's so iconic um and we see the giant statue of her, which we don't really know yet that she's like seven feet tall, actually, which is funny. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot about that point. She is. Like, yeah. because she, She's huge. That's like one of the main mm-hmm. things. Is she's an absolute giant, which I love. Um, I love giant women. And we like don't <laughs> get that. We don't, we don't get that information yet in this episode. Um, but we do still like you get some answers, but mostly more questions about like what like how what did she do to inspire like a set of warrior women to like follow in her to be named the warriors of kiyoshi and also she has an island named after her and like how was she in life and things like that and i I, so it's again another example of like a ton of great world and like lore building that's also done through character stuff because like you're able to ground it in suki and in Mm -hmm. her explaining like the reverence that they have for like kiyoshi and like she explains the details in the costume and like what they're for and like things like that and so you really build up this identity and this like idol isn't exactly the best word but sort of like i like how they idolize kiyoshi and and things like that and it makes it really interesting to where you're like oh i want to know more about her and then it's also cool because you're like that's one of ang's past lives like yeah that like will inform him in the future and so that's super interesting um so yeah, like I love all of that. And the fact that we get that in episode four is wild. Like I almost it's like crazy. Yeah. I remember it now, but like one of the the first times I went to rewatch the show, I was like, I can't believe that this episode happens this early on. Like Yeah. It feels like it would be a later down the line thing, but they immediately establish they get into the meat so yeah, quickly. Sure. Yeah. Which is I mean it's impressive. But it never the- feels quick. No. Yeah. It never, it's because it never feels rushed because it all feel it's again i feel like because it's all just so rooted in the characters and their journey that you're like yeah this feels like a natural like thing and a like natural discovery yeah. 
like as you go through it. It's also crazy to think about the fact that we now have like both Roku and Kiyoshi established already. Mm -hmm. And we're like four episodes in. Four episodes in. We already have two past avatars. Yeah. Insane. And I also love like what? (laughs) They knew what they were doing. (laughs) They know they know what they were doing. They they planned this out. I think they planned this show out. Just gonna put that out there. Maybe a little (laughs) bit. Who's to say? Yeah. But I do love like every episode does leave more questions than it does answers. And that really mm-hmm. does keep you wanting to come back for more and get more information and discover more about the world. And like you said, the lore, the lore is so creative and so good. And yeah, it's like any other fantasy series, like with Harry Potter, or Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, you just want to learn more about the world and what goes on in this universe and, and really dive in and really dive in. And what's really sad about a lot of those series is it does get a bit convoluted. Yeah, and this keeps it, they keep it real clean here. They keep it real clean, which is hard to do. How? Yeah, it's really easy to get unwieldy when you start doing world building stuff and like expand it. I think it helps that it's a very, like, I think the time setting helps them a lot with that, Mm -hmm. which I mean, I guess that doesn't really like Lord of the Rings is medieval stuff too anyway. Yeah. Like, you know, and that is, I've tried to read the Silmarillion. Oh my God. (laughs) It's insane. That's, I, you gotta spend time on that. Yeah. Like, it's, um, this is digestible. Hey, Aspect listener. Enjoying the show? Then be sure to subscribe here on The Aspect so you never miss an episode. And check out more episodes and clips on our playlist here. Thanks so much for watching, and... Blame me, oh, hot man. <laughs> <laughs>